We met in a gym in Sweden when I'd moved there. Matilda had been fighting for a while before. Because binocle is its own and it's illegal in Sweden and I think we're a handful of fighters in Sweden who do binocle boxing. It's been a long journey for me to like get back my life to be better. I fucked my life up when I come out the army. When I come out, I didn't know how the fuck to deal with all of that, like, on my own. Bad shit that happened in my life, but uh, I was sick, so I couldn't use my arm or my, my right leg. And then uh, when I was getting healthy again, I was in a tsunami with my family, and I got like PTSD and was like very traumatized from that. After the tsunami, I got a uh, heart problem, and I keep waking up, and the lights and my heart didn't beat. So then I made a decision of start doing fighting because I was so sick of my whole life since I was eight, something was taken away from me. This basically saved our both lives. To share this together, like that we're having this as a couple, and like, so it's so much more than fighting. I'm Liam Wilson. I'm known as the English Wolf from King of the Streets. And I'm Matilda Wilson, uh, I'm 33 years old. I'm from Sweden, uh, Stockholm, where we live together at the moment. I was both living in Sweden, married, got a three year old son over there. And we're bare knuckle fighters. Moved there, Matilda had been fighting for a while before, and I'd just started from scratch, so we were just doing like uh, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu together. So MMA. So, and then we started with MMA, and then from MMA to I took my first like professional fight after maybe like four amateur fights. We just threw ourselves in the deep end uh, back in England. I took a professional K1 fight. It went all five rounds with an unbeaten guy and it was a, probably one of the best fights I've ever had. So from there, just opened doors. I got noticed from that fight. Then I went into bare knuckle boxing. I got knocked out on my first a uh, bare knuckle fight against Rocky Morgan. Even though that happened, I knew I was learning. I was learning the hard way <clears throat> because I'd just been, um, I started late fighting, so I was just learning as I was fighting. So I just took, took it as it was and I yeah, just loved bare knuckle from then. Because bare knuckle is its own and it's illegal in Sweden and I think we're a handful of fighters in Sweden who do bare knuckle boxing outside of Sweden. So there's not, and the one you can you cannot go to a binocle gym and train and learn. So is it illegal. Illegal, yeah. It's illegal in Sweden, is it? Yeah, it's illegal. <coughs> It'll never be legalized, I don't think. No. There's just too many rules in, in Sweden. So taught herself it was for that Liam that binocle fight Liam had when he said he fought a Rocky Morgan, who's super experienced. It was also like we signed up for a fight. Uh, in England, which is like we didn't see anyone else doing that around us, but we like we just tried our own thing, so we trained for it together. We were like, okay, how do you train for like boxing? We didn't know, so it was just like figuring it out. And then I had a boxing fight on the same event. I, I wasn't a boxer, but I just took it anyway. So I also started taking off my gloves because I saw that his boxing wasn't very good at all. Uh, like, absolutely not. But when he started to take off his gloves, he just peaked. And he went so like accurate and uh, your head movements started to go, your footwork started to go. It's just something clicked. So I was like, I also want to try that. So I did binocle, a little bit binocle training for my boxing fight because I wasn't a boxer, he wasn't a boxer, but we was going to do a binocle boxing and a boxing fight in three months. Yeah. Um, what was that like? How did that happen? Uh, just didn't know what I wanted to do when I left school. So all the lads were like staying on, or like they knew what sort of career path they wanted to go to. So I didn't. So I just signed up for the army and went, and went for it. And I was, yeah, it was a good time in my life, I suppose, until uh, when I come out. And uh, 
yeah, I just fucked my life up when I come out the army. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I've just, it's been a long journey for me to like get back my life to, to be better. So fighting and Matilda has definitely been a massive part in, in that journey. Like, like it's hard to adjust to like, everything is, they live by their own set rules in the army pretty much. So it's, yeah, it's hard to like adjust when you come out of there. Like, like the family bond you have and like, not only that, it's like, you get, went from when I was 16, I was getting like a really good wage from the army and like I was, got good credit, I was able to get credit cards and like my dentist, bills, medical was everything was paid for. So when I come out, I didn't know how the fuck to deal with all of that, like on my own, you know what I mean? So it was just, that was a, the hardest part for me with like the money situation, like paying for my own stuff, like not having that regular income every month and just spiraled out of control, I suppose. Um, it was like a lot of bad shit that happened in my life. Like I have a really good childhood, but I was um, I was never interested in fighting. I never like watched fighting, been interested in fighting, in nothing. But uh, I was sick. Um, I got like um, uh, from a tick. Um, I don't know what it's called again. Yeah, tick. Yeah, the tick. Uh, so I was like not paralyzed, but I couldn't use my joints in my right arm. That's one sapo. Now, uh, so I couldn't use my arm or my, my right leg. So I had to jump on one leg or right with my left hand. It was biking, I had to like kick the pedal to spin it around. So it come back to me so I could. So I was, uh, cause I was very like athletic, did football and loved to like move and stuff. And I was like eight, maybe when I got sick and I was sick till I was 13. So when I got, um, cause they never treated me. They didn't know I had a disease cause I didn't get this like classic red mark that you normally get when you get it. So it goes out to your nervous system, I think, so it, you get um, long-term sick. So when I was healthy at 13, so then was like, they took the football away from me. I got very like limited. I was used to be very like active. And then uh, when I was getting healthy again, I was in a tsunami with my family and I got like PTSD and was like very traumatized from that. I got horses because when you're riding, you can have a bent arm and a bent knee. So I had horses during the time I was sick, uh, so I could do something. So then the horse thing didn't uh, work out really either because I was like scared to be outdoor. I was thinking like a wave can come from the forest because my whole life turned upside down because I didn't know like everything could be a threat, and, a threat for me because I was like 12 and tsunami eight. So then, uh, then I got, uh, after the tsunami, I got uh, heart problems. So they said it was because um, I got PTSD. So they said it's a problem and I keep waking up and the lights and my heart didn't beat. And it kept going like that for a couple of years. Uh, but they said it was because of the tsunami. But then when I was doing security in the airport, when I was 18, 19, um, I collapsed and I had to go into the hospital and I got a pacemaker and then the doctor said to me I wasn't um, allowed to do hockey or fighting uh, because it's like because of the pacemaker so then I made a decision of start doing fighting because I was so sick of my whole life since I was eight something was taken away from me so it, I was just stubborn and it helped me so it was good So I was like, it's enough now, you know what I mean? It was like everything I did was just like taken away from me, taken away from me, it's like I've taken my life back. It's like, you don't tell me what to do. And it's mad because when I first met Matilda, uh, she didn't have a pacemaker, but she had like a chip still inside to monitor her heart. And when I'd listened to her heartbeat, it was like almost non-existent, you know, like skip <laughs> like four or five beats and I'd be like, what the fuck? And she was yeah. like, would get really weak a lot of the times and stuff like that. But 
since we met each other, it's like uh, we helped heal her because <laughs> her heart started getting better, then the chip got removed, and then she got pregnant with Zion. And I, I read up somewhere that when you when you get pregnant, the baby helps the mother heal if they're sick. So the co it will be the cords that are tough. So is it cords? Is yeah, it cords? Yeah, umbilical cords. Yeah, yeah. So because the mother needs to be healthy too for the baby and so on. So after uh, she got pregnant with Zion, and after she had Zion, her heart is completely fucking like healed. It's, it's, it's crazy, mad, like, yeah. Honestly. I was like, I've been feeling like so physical shit for so many years. So, and also like, even though it went like massive difference since I met Liam, because I always had like mental, I was struggling with my mental health. Uh, and I like got to sleep, started to sleep better when I met Liam. I'm a little relaxed more. I was like less anxious, even though I still have my problems. So I, that of course helps. Uh, your heart because it was like it's like a rhythm arrhythm arith problem it like it doesn't send signals to the heart to beat so it was uh, something wrong with that so uh, and like i started eating better so that also affected a lot so before when i was like in fight camps or a dieting and uh, pressure myself or stress my body i could get it back a little bit but now i don't even know when since Zion, I think mm. that was like the final one i yeah. i can in fight camps i still feeling good before i was could be like very dizzy and feeling like weird in the night and stuff, but yeah. now I'm all, all good. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, this is an amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is. Like, I, I sit down it's to pretty cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> it is cool. Do you know that like, when you, as well, you know, if you look at what you do, and there's some people that don't like being a fitness, some people think it's brutal, right? Mm. And if you look at your guys' life before it, it was pretty brutal. Yeah, yeah. And actually what's come out of it, something that's quite beautiful yeah 100 like so then when people like um, have the chic to like putting their opinions on us like especially when we got uh, pregnant to be like now you're gonna stop right and it's like it's just shocking because it's like this basically saved our both lives and like to share this together like that we're having this as a couple and like it's it's a fact also like where we are in life so it's so much more than fighting it's so yeah, much yeah. more than it it's uh, and then for someone to throw that at you, like, you have not even speak about the subject, but people th feel like they have the right to tell you, you should stop. It's like, yeah, well, how if, can someone say that to if, you? If you lose a fight, oh, you're going to stop now, you're going to stop now. It's like, what would I do with instead, you know what I mean? Like, it's just fucking... How you live before it's losing, you know what yeah. I mean? And like, out of anything, it's like, if someone doing football, you you for losing a football yeah. game. No one would say like when you're going off like you're gonna stop for play football now, huh? Or if you're losing a tennis, uh, like a match of tennis. Mm. But all of a sudden, because you're fighting, you should stop mm. because you lost. And it's two people. Like one is gonna lose. It's fifty yeah. <laughs> percent. It's deeper than that. Anyway, with a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. When you went to a contest to fight, right? The China win. But not everybody's fighting to win. That contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bigger than that. Yeah, 100%. Like. Right? Yeah. And I feel like oh, you should say like that because everyone's like, well, what's your goals? You want to get, uh, I want to have this belt, you want to get there. Or like, it's, it's, I feel like I should say, I want to be the world champion of this. I want to have this and that. But like, I, I, I don't. Like, now we like, we sort of get like, oh, that would be cool to get like a fight for a, a belt the same night as mm. a couple. But it's like, yeah, it would be cool, but like, it's not like a massive dream or, I, I haven't been just about like, that for me. It's just our just life. like fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was just after them losses because uh, everybody was saying you're stupid and then I started doubting myself because I was a lot older than then, most people when they started fighting so I was just flicking through Instagram and found King of the Streets and I didn't tell anybody I was going to fight and Matilda was pregnant at the time so we just went down just me and her 
like with the birth. with the big well, labor bag because I was yeah. gonna give birth any day, so he has to bring it so we can rush it off with us. Oh, I just went down there and I was like totally not from the world I'm part of. Like there's a lot of hooligans <laughs> and like firms there and stuff like that and. But I, we earned a lot of respect because I just turned up, me on my own with my girlfriend, and after I won that fight, we went out eating with the Hype crew who run King of the Streets, and I got on really well with the, the lads who were part of Hype crew and who run King of the Streets, and I said, like, I won in on the firm, and they said, uh, I had to, like, come down and start training with them a bit. So I went down and start, kept training with them a little while. And then Dex let me into their like family and they're like another level of like loyal loyalty they live by. So I live by loyalty and respect. So they're really fucking good people to be around. They want they want to push you and uh, they've got your back through whatever. And now I represent Hype Crew when I fight for King of the Streets and just gained a little another little extra family. So it's pretty cool. But you're probably one of the few fighters in King of the Streets, or probably the only one who's not from that world. Is like yeah. you said, it was freaking intimidating because mm. we have not none of us have been in that yeah. world before. So it's like, what is it? It felt like you were in a movie. The thing with us is like uh, people don't realize, but we we coach each other from from day one. We've never had a, a coach or somebody who books fights, somebody who gives us a schedule. We, everything where we are now, we've done solely on our own like we do our we do, mm. do our own diet plan we do our own training we do our Cardio. own fight prep we do we don't everything. yeah we're not none of us like having this learning by doing it it's not like we have any sort of we like, have, we have knowledge by doing it yeah, so yeah. it's we just tr try it out yeah, <laughs> and like still because think like now we're like we're at this level oh but maybe we should have like uh uh maybe we should have a cardio course maybe we should have this but like but we always done this. It's like, mm. okay, I'm not maybe the best at this stuff, but it works. So like, why should we, what's the reason for changing something? Because it works for us. Life only starts outside your comfort zone. And I swear by that, because if you just plod on being comfortable in your life and you're not that happy with it, nothing's going to change. It's a hard thing to do, you know what I mean? It's not, it's the harder decision to make to move away on your own, like not knowing what you're going to do and stuff. Like <laughs> if you're not happy with where you are, that's what you need to do. You need to like take, you need to do something about it. If you're never living authentic, like the real you, you're never gonna be happy. I yeah. think it's so important. Do that and follow your own path. You're gonna attract other people also. You're gonna inspire other people also to do that. And you're gonna feel it's gonna be easier next time as well to follow in that when you have more people around you. And then it's nice because I went from like, people thinking the opposite of me to now like people being proud of me again. And it's, yeah, it's a good feeling. Like. Just do you, you know what I mean? The hardest thing for me was to hear my family and the people you care about wanting me to stop or saying it's a stupid decision, but you know, it's your decision at the end of the day. I think if you have someone that's sharing the same mindset that yeah. you go whatever path you want to go, you don't care about things. So of course, if you have family or friends, someone at least around you, the following whatever is right for them. Um, it makes you stronger. And it's like when it's, you get this feeling in you, like, nah, nah, I don't want to, it's like, fucking go for it. Yeah, <laughs> do exactly, do a uh, total opposite. Okay.